Hello everyone, hopefully this is working and uh, welcome to Snapcraft Live. Uh, I'm just looking out for someone in the chat to say yes everything is working and my audio doesn't sound like Barry White this week and uh, the video works and once I get that then we can all begin. Um, welcome to those of you who are in the chat and uh, those of you watching later on as well. I appreciate uh, that uh, this may be uh, at an awkward time for some of you. Uh, so I'm keen to hear from people who uh, are outside my time zone in the UK and uh, maybe this is a super inconvenient time and you'd like to uh, join us at another time. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, maybe we can move these around uh, because we generally do them around about this sort of time, evening time. I'm perfectly happy to move them to some other time if it's more convenient um, or if we'd get more viewers. Uh, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I'm open to uh, change things around a little bit. Um, so yeah, let me know. I'll tell you the various ways in which you can get in contact towards the end of uh, this Snapcraft Live. So uh, yes, uh, Snapcraft Live is a video we do every so often uh, here on this channel, uh, youtube.com slash snapcraft.io. And the goal of this is to educate and mildly entertain you uh, while we learn about how to build snaps. Uh, and I've done a few of these before, so there's been uh, four in the last couple of months. Uh, we took a little break for a couple of weeks because I was at an event and had some vacation. Uh, but we're back this week and uh, we've got something new and interesting and we've got some uh, new stuff to show you um, and some old stuff to show you as well. So uh, in the chat, uh, if you're uh, joining us, please welcome uh, Claudio Martin. Uh, I think Ziga is in there as well. Zygmunt's in there. Uh, these are my co-workers at Canonical, and they're happy to answer your questions. They have deep knowledge of Snapcraft, uh, way more than I know, and uh, they'll be happy to answer your questions. So uh, if you're watching this later, then it's a good idea to keep an eye on the chat as well, because maybe some of the questions that you're thinking of while you're watching this, maybe they will scroll past in the chat as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, aiming for this to be no more than about an hour, um uh because uh you know too long and nobody's going to watch so let's get let's get looking at uh, what we're going to cover today so today's uh video as always i have these notes which i will try and remember to post into the uh, description beneath the video after we finish here's the goal uh understand some of the limitations of the build service that we've talked about in previous videos um and how launchpad can be used as an alternative way for us to build snaps uh, and uh, that's that's really the goal is you know what's what can't we do with build.snapcraft.io and what can we do with launchpad and the reason why i'm doing this is because um Hmm. <coughs> Hello. 
Uh, I don't know if you can see me, whether we're back. Okay. Are you able to hear me at all? No. Pause. <sighs> Sorry about this. Oh dear me. Where was I? Uh, so, um, hold on just one second. Hopefully the microphone is working now. Tap, tap, tap. Hello. Sorry, everyone. How embarrassing. Where were we? <laughs> uh, so, understand the limitations of build.snapcraft.io and figure out how we can build in Launchpad. Okay, so let's start with um, the build service and understand what's going on here and why this is a uh, problem. So we've covered this before, how to uh, build in uh, in Snapcraft. Uh, you push your code into GitHub. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> this is what happens when you reboot. <laughs> Bear with me just one sec. So assume, assume I have uh, pushed some code into GitHub. And... Uh, And I've hooked it up into the build service. So you go to build.snapcraft.io, hook it up to uh, GitHub, and then in here, you'll see a super list of all the repositories uh, that you've hooked up through the build service. Now, this is immediately one of the limitations of uh, the build service, is that this only works with GitHub. Uh, now, there are a lot of projects on GitHub, and uh, we took an educated decision based on how many projects there are on GitHub and where most of the developer focus is that the build service would connect primarily to GitHub. It's possible in the future we will add the capability to add to other services, but right now it's limited to, to GitHub. So if you host your code somewhere else, uh, whether that's GitLab or Bitbucket or somewhere else, then this build service uh, doesn't really cater for that use case. There are workarounds for that, but um, it's not built to do that. So, for example, here's the uh, snap we made a few weeks ago uh, up here, the uh, word salad snap that you may remember that I built um, some weeks ago. Uh, I think we made this while we were in Malta, maybe. Um, and uh, this code is hosted on GitHub and is pulled in by build and then built on a bunch of build systems and then uploaded to the store. So there's one limitation uh, that it only works with GitHub. Second limitation of the build service is that it only uh, pulls from the master branch. And this might be okay for a small project where everything goes to master and it's okay for the build service to pull directly from master and push to the store. But many projects actually use different branches for different things. And maybe you do your development on a devel branch and you have features on a feature branch. And, and you might want to build those branches and push them to the store and not master. And so, again, build doesn't cater for that, uh, for that use case. So uh, how can Launchpad help us? And why would we want to use Launchpad? Well, behind all of this... What's actually building your uh, your project are the Launchpad builders. So you can think of build.snapcraft.io as a friendly front end to Launchpad. And what I'm going to show you today is how you can actually push your code directly to Launchpad. And then you have a little bit more control over how that build happens. So uh, Launchpad is uh, this website here, launchpad.net. Uh, now, to sign up to Launchpad, uh, you need a single sign-on account. And actually, it's the same single sign-on account that you get to up here in the top right-hand corner of the Snapcraft.io website. So it's not that you have to create another whole account to use Launchpad. You've already got one. This single sign-on account will work on Launchpad as well. So this is my same account. Now, in Launchpad, 
Uh, Launchpad's been around for a very long time. It was developed, um, well, before Ubuntu even existed, so some time ago, more than 10 years ago. Um, and Launchpad historically uh, hosted code using the Bazaar revision control system, BZR. Some people call it Bazaar, some people call it BZR. Um, and uh, more recently, it's gained the capability to host Git repositories as well. Um, and so you can choose. If you're familiar with Bazaar, as I am, I can push code to Launchpad using Bazaar. But if you're more familiar with Git, then you can push code to Launchpad using Git. Um, there's some help here. Um, these uh, these links are all going to be in the notes that I'll put in the description below. Um, but this is just the online documentation talking about how it can support hosting uh, Git repositories on Launchpad. Personally, my muscle memory works really good for Bazaar, and so I use Bazaar all the time. But this is an option. So let me show you like the quick and dirty way to, to push code into Launchpad and get a snap built out of it. And then I'll show you a, a more robust and uh, more team-centric way to do it. So in my terminal, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. You may remember I keep all my snaps in this My Snaps folder. And I've got a, a snap which I've called Hello GitLab, which will make more sense a little bit later. And it's a super simple snap. I'm not going to go through the details of this Snapcraft YAML, and I'm not even going to try and build it locally, because the whole point of this is we're building on a remote host. We're building on Launchpad. So uh, what I'm going to do is skim over what this does, because we've covered that in a lot more detail in previous videos. So it's a very simple snap. All it does is build this little GNU Hello World uh, project and it uses the auto tools plugin uh, so there's not really an awful lot to it I've just called it hello GitLab and we'll see why a little bit later so um, what I can do is I can push this to launchpad uh, very easily with um, I'm going to use bazaar but you could use git so I'm going to initialize this repository much the same as you would with git and I'm going to add my snap craft yaml into bazaar and then i'm gonna bazaar commit it's very similar to to git i suppose uh initial build initial mm, snap demo building in launchpad you'll see a lot of places uh, people will use lp as shorthand for launchpad so uh now that i've um committed that I can push it to Launchpad. Now, here's the here's the super cool thing. Uh, Launchpad has a whole concept of uh, projects uh, and teams and loads of infrastructure and uh, almost bureaucracy around creating a project. But I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way to get a snap built in Launchpad. So I'm going to do bizarre push. And I'm going to push my repository that I've got on my hard drive right now to LP. I can never remember the syntax of this. Uh, PP slash plus junk slash hello GitLab test. Now, what that's saying is push the repository that I've got, the bizarre repository I've got on my local machine, to Launchpad. That's LP. The user is Popey, and that's me. That's my account on Launchpad. So if you go to Launchpad, it's your ID that you see up here in the top right-hand corner that's under my webcam. But you can just about see my mouse up there next to, next to, is it there? Just there's my mouse, right? If you click up there, um, if you notice the URL way down at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, it's Launchpad tilde Popey, right? So that's my account in Launchpad tilde Popey, right? The plus junk means I'm just going to like dump this in uh, Launchpad. I'm not going to create a whole project around it. I'm not going to have a whole team of developers around it. It's just somewhere for me to just throw the code. Um, and hello GitLab test is the name I'm going to give it. So when I do this, oh. boom, it's pushed to Launchpad. This will all become very clear in a minute. Now, all I need to do then is go to my code page on Launchpad. And you'll see I now have, if I make this a bit bigger, a moment ago, my initial snap to demo building in Launchpad has appeared. So the code 
that I had on my hard drive, I've just initialized a bizarre repository and pushed it into uh, Launchpad as a junk branch. Now, if I go back, you'll notice there's also this option here for Git repositories. So if I wanted to, I could have pushed a Git repository, but I happen to push a bizarre repository in this particular case, just because I want to show you both. I'll show you Git a bit later, but I'm just showing you bizarre for now because it's quick and easy. Now, here's a really cool thing. All I did was initialize a repository, push it into Launchpad. Now what I can do is say, please create a snap package. Ha ha. So this is the bit where I'm telling Launchpad, I want to create a snap out of this repository. So I just hit that button and it will ask me for some details about the project. Now, I give it a name. Hello, GitLab test. Uh, this could match the name of the snap that I may have registered in the store, but it doesn't have to because you can create lots of these snaps and they can all have different names. So I'm just going to call it Hello GitLab Test for now. The owner of it is me, but that could be a team. But because this is my junk branch, you can see it says plus junk in the URL there, then I'm the only person who has access to this. There's no other people who have access to write to this repository. So I'm the owner of this repository. And because we're using, in our Snapcraft YAML, uh, Core 18, building against an Ubuntu 1804 minimal kind of image, then we need to choose Ubuntu Bionic. Ubuntu Bionic is the code name for 1804. It's a little bit obscure, um, but yeah, Ubuntu Bionic. So I'm just choosing what I want to build against. If I was using uh, base 16, then I would use um, the other one, Xenial, Ubuntu Xenial. Now, down here is where I choose what architectures I want to build the snap for. Now, it's possible that my application works on all the architectures, but maybe I only want to support a few of them. Uh, maybe I only have machines that I can test on, 32-bit um, Intel and 64-bit Intel, and maybe a Raspberry Pi kicking around. So I can say only Raspberry Pi ARM HF, only AMD64, and only i386, because I have a lot of computers, but I don't have any IBM System Z systems in here so i'm not going to build for that because it's just not something i can support so you get to choose which architectures you're going to support now there's a whole lot of further options down here um you can have the snap build a source tarball um, i don't think that's super useful because my source is already somewhere else so I, i'm not going to bother with that um, now this is really cool automatically build when this branch changes so what that says is if this branch uh, gets updated, so if I make a change on my machine and then push that change to Launchpad, it will rebuild the snap again. And it will do that every time I make changes. So I could tick that. Uh, there's a couple more fields I need to specify in here. Uh, these fields here are for uh, when it's building, where do we get the core snap from, which channel in the store do we get the core snap from and which channel do we get snapcraft from uh, because core is like the minimal runtime that the application is built against and snapcraft is the tool that we're building it and those two are snaps themselves and they come from the store so uh, just to show you that they're in the store snapcraft io slash core um, up here you can see there are four different revisions of core in different channels. I'm only ever going to build against stable. If I was testing something, I might build against candidate or beta, but I'm only going to build against stable myself. And the same goes with Snapcraft. Unless you want to test a new feature of Snapcraft, you're probably only going to want to use the version of Snapcraft when you build in Launchpad from the stable channel. So... Uh, let's go back to wherever it was I was. There he is. So I just put stable in there and stable in there. Done. Now, there's another really cool funky thing down here. Automatically upload to the store. Now, I'm not going to do that because I haven't actually registered the name Hello GitLab. But this is what would be uh, the amazing magic source that once it builds in Launchpad, it automatically pushes your snap, all the architectures that you build for, straight to the store. And if you tick that, it will, at the point when you hit create down here, it will check with the store that you own that name. 
So it won't let you just push any random snap to the store. You have to own it, and it will authenticate to the store and check that you have permission, either as the owner or as a collaborator of a snap, to push that application to the store. I don't, because I've not registered Hello GitLab. There are enough Hello World apps in the store. I don't need to add to that carnage. Um, but I could tick that box and then uh, automatically push directly into the Edge channel. So I'm not going to do that. So just a review. I've given it a name. I specify the build version of Ubuntu I want it to build on. I specify the architectures I want to support. I've told it to build every time this um, changes. And I just hit create. Now at this point, it's creating the definition of uh, creating a snap. So here we now have um, the definition of creating a snap. And you can see uh, it's got all the details that I put in earlier. There's the code, where it's going to get the code from. Uh, it's going to build against Bionic. Um, it's going to build automatically every time this changes. And it's going to go and get Core and Snapcraft from the stable channel. I haven't actually built it yet. If I press this button, it will start a build. Bop. Now, it's asking me, of the supported architectures, which one do you want to build on? If I don't specify, it's just going to build on all three. So let's just hit request builds. So the bit where I was creating the snap, this definition here, I only need to do that once. Once that's done, I can come in here and press that request build button anytime I want to request a new build of my application. Or I just change my code and push it into Launchpad and I'll get a new build automatically. And if I chose to tick the box to push it to the store, then it would be pushed to the store as well. I hope this is all making some kind of sense. Um, but if I refresh this after a little while, there we go. It's currently building for all the architectures that I specified. That's pretty groovy. You can edit this definition up here. So I can go back in. And if I want to change the list of supported architectures or anything else, I can do that in here. Um, but if I ever want to request a new build, from the top, I just go to Launchpad. Let's go to Launchpad, just so you know how to find it. You go to Launchpad, go to your own page. Click on code on the top left. Go to the uh, project that you want to build. And this is the uh, web view of my source code. I can browse the source code from here and you'll see there's one snap package using this branch. And that's the definition that I just created, this definition here. And then down here are the builds currently running. So, I can very relatively quickly, I mean, this when I'm not explaining it, this takes me five minutes to just push something to Launchpad, go into this screen, hit Create Snap, and then have a snap start building pretty quickly. Uh, so, it's, it's very quick. Once you're used to this UI, it's a little bit quirky. Launchpad's a little bit old, uh, but some of us have quite a fondness for it. So, that was the first thing I wanted to show, was uh, that you can push to Launchpad uh, to trigger, um, a, uh, to create a, a snap through this, this user interface. And I can request additional builds via two ways. So far, we've learned two ways. One, I can go back to the console and I can make a change to my code and say, uh, this is to trigger another build. Right, and I've changed my YAML, and if I bizarre, do I do add again? I think I do. And then bizarre commit. So I'm just making a change to my code, a simple change. Modified the YAML to trigger a build. And then push. It's remembered where to push to. If I go back to Launchpad, you'll see down the bottom, it's updating the branch because I've just pushed again. And if I refresh the screen, you'll see 
revision two is now in launchpad i've pushed it to launchpad and if we go to one snap package using this branch you'll probably see oh i've got three more uh builds for uh this application so i'm i'm in danger of using up all the builders in launchpad um uh, so it's built revision one or it's building revision one in in some builders and because i've pushed a change it's now building it again so this is pretty neat i think uh it's a great way to get like down and dirty and under the covers of how to build stuff and have a little bit more control than you get with uh build.snapcraft.io so I've, I've shown you two ways to build there one press this button two push a change to your code i'll give you a third way what if you don't want to change your code you've got no code changes lined up but you want to trigger another build uh, maybe the store has sent you an email to tell you uh, that there's a uh, problem uh, security a known cve with one of the libraries that you're using which does happen we do send emails out if you've got a, a library that's got a known cve what if you've been told there's a, a known cve and you want to trigger a rebuild well you could log into launchpad and then start going through this screen and press that button uh, but there's another tool you can use and i'll show you what that tool is it's in the store of course and it's called lp hyphen build snap now this is a little command line utility that you can run on your laptop to trigger builds in launchpad and so you could do that when you get the email from the security team to say you've got a CVE, you need to rebuild your snap. You could just drop to the command line and use LP build snap in order to trigger another build of your application. So let's do that. I've already installed this. Uh, LP build snap. I think I've already got it installed. There we go. Uh, so if I just run LP build snap, It'll give me the um, command line options. And so I just give it everything it needs to know. Uh, my launchpad name, oops, if I can type, which is Bopi. Um, and the, uh, I mean, that is the absolute minimum. You can just give it that. Um, no, you can't. You have to give it the snap name. Um, what was it? Hello, GitLab test, wasn't it? Um, yes. My snap was called, snap package was called hello git lab test. Okay, so we've currently got six of them. And if I do this, lp build snap, lp name popey, and then the name of the snap, which is the last parameter you specify. This will trigger only one build, AMD64. Um, it doesn't trigger builds for all the architectures. If you want to build for another architecture, you can you just specify arch and then the architecture you want to build for. There we go. So now I've triggered two more builds. Oh dear, launchpad team are going to be very unhappy with me monopolizing. I mean, it doesn't take long for these to build. Whoa, there we go. More builds. So we've now got three ways to build. Push code, press that button, or run LP build snap on the command line. Um, for a long time, I've been using a cron job running LP build snap to build some of my snaps to give me daily builds. I only have the cron job run overnight and it just pokes all the snaps that I have and just triggers them all to build whenever I want. That's pretty cool, I think. Okay, let's go back to our notes. I can see lots of questions coming up in uh, in the chat and it looks like they're all being answered nicely by uh, my colleagues. Thank you very much, Claudio and, uh, and Martin and uh, Ziga. Thank you all very much. So, We've understood the uh, limitations of build. Uh, we've learned how to use Launchpad. We've pushed source to a junk branch. Now let's try something else. So one of the other limitations that I mentioned was what if you host your code somewhere else and you don't use GitHub? So this was one of the limitations of build is it only accesses uh, GitHub. What if you host it somewhere else? What if you use GitLab? There's been a lot of people who've been telling us, hey, I use GitLab. There's some significant uh, open source projects that use GitLab and they would like to build snaps. So here's an option that you can use if you host code outside of Launchpad, but you want to build snaps using our build infrastructure in Launchpad. Here's what you can do. Launchpad supports something called VCS imports. 
So Launchpad can import a project from another host into itself, and then you can build a snap from that. And it will periodically pull in the code from the external VCS on a regular basis. Um, I think this t says down here, there we go. Uh, they get updated six to 12 hours or so. So it's not, you know, it's not on every commit. I think it would get a little bit excessive and Launchpad would be massively overloaded if it was refreshing all these repositories from all over the place and we'd need a lot more infrastructure for that. It's a convenience, uh, a useful tool, um, but we're like, trying not to abuse it. We'll just use it to import a small project and then create a snap. Uh, but it's very difficult to abuse because it doesn't it doesn't refresh super often. Uh, so how do we go about doing this? Well, it tells you here. Um, make sure the project is registered in Launchpad. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because you actually have to register a project. It's not like my junk branch where I just pushed to some junk location and built a snap directly out of that. Uh, you have to actually create a project in Launchpad. So let's do that. It's fairly easy to create projects in Launchpad. Uh, there you go, there's a button over here, register a project. You can also do it directly from the the, the um, homepage of uh, Launchpad. Uh, if you go to launchpad.net, there's a register a project here. So this is pretty straightforward. Now, uh, all you've got to do really is just give your project a name. I'll call it Hello Git, uh, GitLab. You can probably see why I've called it that now. Uh, uh, test project to pull code from GitLab and build it as a snap. Boom. So all I've done there is tell Launchpad I want to create a project. Now projects in Launchpad are big, potentially big complicated things because a project you can um, have a team and you can have milestones for your development and you can enable a bug tracker and uh, all kinds of uh, funky stuff. We're not doing any of that. All we're doing is creating the project as a container in which we're going to host our code that we're going to import from GitLab. Okay, so this won't be the primary place where anyone does development. Everyone does their development elsewhere on GitLab and they just use Launchpad to pull the code in and build a snap out of it. Um, so that's it. I just press continue. Um, I think it might ask me, it might say, hey, there are other projects already registered with that name or similar names. Are you sure? You know, yeah, I'm sure. It's a new project. It's not one of those. Uh, so all I need to do is specify a license, that'll do, and uh, and then the maintainer here is me. So if I was if I was building a big team, then maintainer would be a team name in there. But I, I'm just building this for myself. I'm not planning to work on this with anyone else. Boom. So now I've got a project. Now that I've got a project, the next thing that the documentation says I have to do is visit this page for requesting a code import. Click the link. Again, all these links are going to be in the description below. So now this is saying, okay, where do you want to where do you want to import your code from? So I'm going to own this. It's not a team project, it's mine. And the project that I'm going to uh, import this to, we just created it. It's called Hello GitLab, right? So, hello GitLab. That's the project we're going to import the code into. Um, I'm just going to call it leave the name trunk. Now, here are the options for where we can import from. So, Launchpad knows how to deal with a number of external uh, version control systems. It can pull from you know, a third-party host that is a bazaar repository or is a Git repository or a version or CVS. Now, we're pulling from Git because it's GitLab, and so I choose Git. And I go to my repository, and I get the URL that you would normally use to clone, and I copy that, and I go back, and I paste it in there. Bop. Now, I've already shown you how to do uh, bizarre uh, repositories in Launchpad. Let's, let's choose Git. So we're actually doing a Git to Git uh, copy, pulling in from GitLab into Launchpad, uh, where we're going to host it in a git repository <laughs> effectively we're mirroring an external repository in here that's pretty much it that's all you got to do just give it a name uh specify the url 
Where do you want to import it to? Hit request import. Now this will uh, take a little while. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, if I talk for long enough, uh, it will probably be done. So now what we have, notice this URL here. It's a Git repo in Launchpad. And it's under my name, my Launchpad account, not a group, not a team. It's under my name. And it's called Hello GitLab. And that's going to get dumped in this area called Trunk. And if I scroll down, you can see the import details here. It says it's been reviewed. And this is where it's going to come from. And it says here the import is currently running on that. That is one of the hosts, one of the many, many machines somewhere in the Launchpad data centers. If I refresh this, probably by now, it's pulled my code over from uh, Launchpad, uh, from GitLab, and it has. So, what have we done? We've created a project, and then I've told it uh, to import my code from GitLab into Launchpad. And the goal of this is so that I can build it in Launchpad. Now, there's a few things on this screen which are quite interesting that are worth noting. Obviously, I can always see where the code came from. So that's useful. Um, and this is a public page. You could go to this URL, I think, probably, if I paste it in the chat, you could probably go to that URL and you'd probably see the same as me, but you wouldn't see all the same buttons and edit options here. Um, but it, you'd still see what I see here. Now, you'll notice here it says the next import is scheduled to run in five hours and an import now button. So if you've done a whole load of work during the day and on, on GitLab and you want to force an import into Launchpad, you can do that. You just press that button and it will force import from GitLab or wherever third party um, version control system into Launchpad. Job done. Uh, there's also a log of you know what happened during the import just in case that failed. So let's check a couple of things. First off, let me just um, show you my code over here. Now, this is over on GitLab, right? And on GitLab, all you can see in my master branch is a readme. And this is uh, highlighting the problem that I mentioned previously, one of the um, limitations of the build service, build.snapcraft.io, is it only builds for a master. Whereas I also have another branch called devel. And in the devel branch, oh look, there is a snap folder. And in the snap folder, there is a snapcraft YAML. And so what I'm getting at here is I have a good example here where I've got some uh, a, a code repository where the, the necessary assets to build a snap are actually in a branch that's not master. And that wouldn't work on build.snapcraft.io. Other than the fact this is on GitLab and not GitHub, and that wouldn't work on uh, build.snapcraft.io, but we'll leave that to one side. Now, the reason why I highlighted that is because you'll see down here, Devel and Master, those are the same branches that were on the GitLab host. And I may have lots of branches. Those will all be mirrored here. There might be lots of different branches being used by different developers working on different parts, and some maybe there are a couple of people working on uh, the snap in a different branch. And so you can choose which branch you want to uh, create a snap from. So now we've got the code in here, we want to create a snap. And the way you do that is you choose down here which branch you want to build the snap of. So I'm going to build a snap out of the devel branch. And if I click on that, you can see somewhere down here, there we go, create snap package. Now you're going to say a similar uh, user interface to what we saw with Bazaar. But remember now we're hosting using Git and not Bazaar. But the user interface is very similar. So again, I'm going to build a snap package out of that code. I'll call it hello GitLab as the name of this package. I'm going to build for 1804, which is Bionic. Uh, sorry, I was disconcerting, disconnected from the chat. I choose which architectures I want to build for. And I can choose whether I want to automatically build when this branch changes. Well, that makes total sense because uh, if I make changes on GitLab and then the VCS import job pulls that code across from uh, GitLab into Launchpad, 
then this branch will change and so I will want an automatic build. So I'm going to tick that box. Again, I specify stable, stable, because those are the channels that I want to get core and Snapcraft from. I could optionally choose to automatically upload to the store, but as I said earlier, I haven't registered this snap. I'm just demonstrating building a snap. The publishing part is basically ticking that box. And then I hit create snap package. So now I've got a definition of, uh, oh, interesting. Uh, sorry, I've just noticed the chat has stopped working. Uh, just refresh. Does it work again? No. Okay. Nothing to do with me. Chat's broken. So I'll carry on regardless. Uh, so I've created again this snap package definition for my repository that's come from GitLab. And now I want to request a build. Exactly the same as I did before, request build. And I can choose which architectures or leave them all uh, as they are and it will build for all three. I hit request builds. And in theory, down here, there we go, we have builds running, sweet. So I've now uh, covered uh, the main bulk of what I wanted to talk about, which was um, the limitations of build.snapcraft.io, uh, how you can push code into Launchpad and kind of go into expert mode. You, you should really think of build.snapcraft.io as, as kind of an introduction tool for building snaps. It's very powerful, uh, but uh, there are limitations which we're aware of. Um, and you could think of Launchpad as being like advanced mode for building snaps um, on our infrastructure. Ultimately, they build on the same machines, the same physical hosts in the data center build them in the same way. Uh, but um, uh, this just gives you more control and your ability to use the LP build snap command on the command line uh, and request builds directly from the, the terminal. And also go to the website and just press the button if you want to request builds. So this is all very uh, 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 you know, useful if you're one of those people who's hosting outside of GitHub, for sure. I think I've covered everything that was on the agenda. Uh, unfortunately, the chat has stopped working, so I'm not getting any messages, uh, but apparently everything's still working. <laughs> uh, there's one extra thing I wanted to show um, as a little bonus uh, that I thought I'd show you. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, once, you, once you've gone past all this and you've built and published your application in the store, let's look at the one I published a little while ago. Uh, you, you, your ultimate goal is to get here, right? To get your application published in the store so that people can come here and learn about your application, learn how to install it, and then ultimately install your application and enjoy using it, whatever it is it does. Now, uh, this... Uh, snap store front end is under constant development uh, the web team at canonical are working hard to make this a pleasurable experience both for developers to use and also for users to experience as well and uh, one of the features that arrived relatively recently that i wanted to show you um, is a great way to promote your application so this will assume that you've published your application in the store and you want to promote it um, to visitors to your website, maybe. Uh, and so let's go and have a look at the listing page for my application, Word Salad. So this is what you would see if you own a snap in the store, you published something in the store. This is the listing page where you, we saw this a couple of weeks ago, where you can go in and uh, modify the metadata and uh, we have other tools in here to release revisions of the application. We can see metrics. This is quite funny. This uh, silly word salad uh, program has 20 users for whatever reason. Um, and uh, the extra thing that's landed is over here in Publicize. Now I showed you this uh, last time, the Snap Store buttons. This is a way that you can put a button on your website um, to draw people towards the Snap Store so they can easily learn more about your application and install it. So these buttons uh, we already knew about, um, already here, and I, I mentioned these before, and there's a, 
I've got a good example of one here. This uh, rather cool Snap, uh, rather cool game called ASCII Patrol is available in the Snap Store. And look, they've got a big get it in the Snap Store button, right? And so these buttons are great for you know directing people who are on your download page, maybe. But what if you're, do you're writing a blog or article or you want something that uh, gives people more information than just that button, right? And so that's what this publicize tab has added embeddable cards down here under embeddable cards we have options for big size cards that you can put on your website so rather than just have the little button you can have a nice size card that would be great for you to embed in a blog article or just have on a page somewhere uh, on your website so people can immediately see for example the icon the description screenshot um, a link to take them to the store, but also they can see what version is in the store and when it was last updated in the store. And all this is done just with a, a little bit of uh, HTML that you paste into your, uh, your site, and that allows people to very easily see the basics about your application without sending them away from your website. So you could have this in line in a blog post, and you, know, you might expect people to read a bit about your application, get a nice card that describes the application with a screenshot, and then carry on scrolling because you want them to stay there and carry on reading your important blog post, your announcement, right? And so that's where this is uh, really useful. You can customize this a little bit. Uh, you can make the store button, which is this button down here, light or dark. Or you could hide the button completely, so you just show the card and you don't have the button that sends them off to the Snap Store. Uh, you could also hide some of the other details, so it doesn't show all the channels, it only shows the stable channel, for example. You could hide the screenshot, or even hide the summary to make it really small. So you get some options in here. Uh, really, we're really keen to hear um, what you think of these, because I think they're great. I think it's a, a really nice way for you to present the applications that you've built in your blog or on your website or somewhere in you know your collateral somewhere. They, look, they even look good printed out. I mean, you can't click on them, but they still look good. Um, and I've got an example of where we've used these recently. Uh, Martin wrote a blog post uh, recently highlighting some of the applications that uh, uh, the KDE team had published in the store. And uh, we highlighted a whole load of them over February. And uh, Martin has uh, maintained this uh, blog post, which... Uh, reviews those applications that we talked about over February and you can see there each of the applications um, we've got a screenshot a short description but he's used these cards to kind of highlight each of the applications and and surface things like the published date and the version because you know for something like Krita which is a popular application it's important for people to know the version that's in the store and obviously this dynamically updates so if someone comes to this web page in a month's time this version number might not be the same and the publish date would probably be different as well so i just wanted to show you that because uh i love it and uh i wanted to highlight something uh that's in the store that uh this storefront that changes all the time and i think it's rather groovy um i think that's everything we wanted to uh to talk about yes so you'll notice down here i've um put a little reference in there with some um links to the places that uh, I've talked about, the documentation, and uh, how you can learn more, and also an example of the um, LP build snap command, um, and then a link to the embeddable cards thing at the bottom there. Um, that was all of the prepared material I had for today. Um, I apologize for the technical issues that we had at the start. Uh, I'm not going to embarrass anyone by uh, telling you what exactly happened. I had to reboot, though, uh, <laughs> which makes me very unhappy. Um, so thank you for watching, uh, and uh, I really appreciate feedback on this. So um, if you'd like to um, suggest different topics for another Snapcraft Live, uh, things you'd like us to go into more detail on, um, or topics you'd like us to cover, then the best way to get in touch is uh, on the Snapcraft Forum. Uh, so you'll find the link at the top of the Snapcraft website up there, forum.snapcraft.io. Uh, we also have an IRC channel, hash Snapcraft, on uh, Freenode. A lot of people hang out in there. I can see some of the people from the community in the uh, in the chat right now who hang out in those IR that IRC channel. 
Um, and uh, you can probably find me elsewhere on uh, on uh, Twitter. We have a Twitter account as well, twitter.com slash snapcraft.io. Uh, we also have a Mastodon account. If you're uh, a tutor, then uh, follow us over on Mastodon. And obviously here on YouTube, uh, you can leave comments uh, and uh, subscribe and ring the little bell and that'll let you know when the next one of these will be. Um, I'm not going to say when that's going to be because um, we're thinking about moving these around so that we can cover different time zones because not everyone, uh, it's not convenient for everyone to arrive at this kind of time. So it's a good idea to uh, hit the little bell on uh, YouTube and also subscribe to either YouTube, uh, the Twitter feed or the Mastodon feed because we promote these uh, live sessions there as well. So again, thanks for joining us and uh maybe see you next time and if you get any problems with your snap crafting you know where to come come to the snap craft forum we'll see you there thanks for joining us everyone